My name's Diane Gregory and my horse I've bought today is uh, Jin. She's a five-year-old warm blood. So I started riding when I was eight years old uh, and I started on ponies with, uh, with British show jumping and went through onto a young horse and then uh, a bigger horse a bit later on uh, through till I was about 28 years old. So I did about 16 years with, with British show jumping. I then had a break from horses um, and have recently, in the last couple of years, just gone back to it and started to jump again, which I'm really enjoying. Uh, things are a lot different now, even the horse management and, and technically how you ride a horse and, and your position has changed significantly over the last 16 years since, since I've been out of it. So not only have I got a young horse that I need to learn and learn fast on, it's all about teaching myself as well really to, to ride a bit differently and look after the horse a lot differently now as well. So I'm very much looking for having that guidance and the really good training that British Show Jumping offers to give me that support, particularly it's my first young horse that I've got. She, she's four, just turned five. Um, she's been lovely, a lovely horse, has been nicely produced and, and she's ready to go at British Novice. So I don't want to be letting her down, if anything. I want to up my game a little bit and make sure I can do her justice. Having that goal to, 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 to look for and aim for is going to help me get my training right and get my riding right and, and give me that chance, and that opportunity to get those double clears and get to those championships. So focusing really, really hard on, on the training and, 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 and what you do at home really, not what you do at show, it's all about what you do at home. So I'm coming here today um, really at the moment to focus on the basics. So she's a young horse, she's, she's got the ability to jump easily around a British novice, but I need to be getting the basics right. So at the moment her canter's a little flat, so I really want to concentrate on, you know, between the jumps, not the jump itself, it's, it's getting her straight into the fence getting her hocks underneath her so she's coming in on a nice rhythm and, and a good canter. At the moment she's coming in a bit, too, a bit too fast, a bit too forward and she's a bit too flat. So then she's jumping flat over the fence. And that's a lot of my, you know, a lot of my positioning and my, and my seat and where I am um, and, and just really getting to know her a bit better and, get, and getting that canter right. I'm certainly hoping to address quite a lot of that uh, and, and get the right techniques and, and, and know that I'm on the right path to, to doing that so I can go home and practice that and, and do the homework really. Okay, so today with Di, um, our aims for the session uh, on this, this young horse that she's got, relatively new young horse that she's got, um, is, to get, is to focus on her technique and her tactics to help her be able to um, get with this horse a little better to help her to be able to create that canter um, again the ever important canter and maintain that round her courses um, I will definitely be focusing on her a little bit uh, getting her to reflect on position and how effective she is in her position she, it's it's quite a big horse it's still five years old she's not a big person so we need to have a, a, an effective rider when working with a young horse um, to be able to look at the whole picture, the big picture, and work holistically um, in terms of his or her physical development, um, the rider's level of, of ability and training and, and knowledge, um, absolutely it's, it's so important that we take a, take a, a bigger picture view um, and introduce maybe some extra help if we need it as well in terms of being aware of saddle changes and physical changes and you know all of those kinds of things that we need to to work with, the, as I say, the whole picture. The goal for this session, um, looking at a little bit more at you, position. Yeah, absolutely. And just, just getting you thinking about position. Yeah. And, and for me, obviously, I want to get a look at her. I haven't seen her before. Mm -hmm. um, and um, see yeah, what strange. we've got underneath us. Yeah. Yeah. Would there, be, would there be anything else for this session that you would say, do you know what, I'm, this is what I really, would be a really good session if I could take away X, Y, or Z. Yeah, if I could take that away and get feel like her canter's improving okay. or I've got things to work on for her canter. Brilliant, okay. Because once I've done that, totally I think happy. the jumps will be Super. fine. Okay, good girl. Um, right, just keep her walking for a minute, bless her. So there's quite a lot yeah. going on, isn't there? Yeah. What I'm going to do is um, actually, have you cantered yet in your warm-up? Yes, I've had a canter okay. round. Now, I would like to see you and her working in, in trot for a few minutes and then into canter. Now, the things that I would look for um, or, or want to know before I start jumping are basically your scales of training. Yeah. All right. So within your scales of training, rhythm, balance, impulsion would be pretty important to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I'd want to know I can ride a straight line. Yeah. And I can bend right and left around a turn. Yeah. Okay. So with those things in mind, we can use this arena cleverly. So for example, we're not going to just ride on the edge of the track. Okay. If we do ride on the long sides, we'll stay at least a meter off the edge. Yeah. Okay. It's a huge arena. So uh, when I say be aware that in the short sides, well, this, this could be alongside of another arena, couldn't it? But yeah. in your short sides through your turns, be aware of the consistency of the pace. So naturally a horse could shorten in a corner or on a short side. Yeah? Yeah. So what could it mean it might do naturally on a long side? Uh, speed up. Exactly. Exactly. So what we're going to work to do is that you, you find a routine that's beneficial to your jumping where you're conscious of working through turns, through short sides and conscious of balance uh, in the pace on those longer, more open runs. Okay, so it's yeah. almost thinking a little bit bigger in the steps through the turns and maybe a little bit more together and up on the short sides. And I'm talking very subtle at this stage. She's a five-year-old, she's okay. a big horse. Yeah, so yeah. We, we, we're not expecting physically to be able to have any, any sort really of change of pace in a, in a big way, all right? Mm -hmm. So do you feel that, like, if I said, right, go away for me for a couple of minutes, yeah. and I want to show you straight sides, show me a couple of circles, work on both reins, and let's see that we've got those things in trot and in canter. Okay. And then we'll see, we'll, we'll see what we think, what we've got. Okay. If you ride a straight line on this side, Di, it's probably a good idea to ride on the inside of those jumps because yep. it kind of sets you up for riding that line potentially, if we use it. Gives me an opportunity to stand behind you too. Di, when you're working in your canter, tell me when it's the kind of canter that you take to the first fence in the, in the ring. Okay. About now. Good, okay. And is that still the canter you take to the first fence in the ring? No. Why not? Uh, I feel like I need a little bit more impulsion. Okay, so tell me again when it is. That now. Okay. And can you keep it through the turn? Good girl. All right. Tell you what, take a breather for a minute. Well done, you. <laughs> 